here. Someone wanted <laughs> pictures. Get over here. Whoop. Hello. My name is Hello Tom. And someone from the Friendoverse, a group I am part of. Oh, I really have to turn your nails, don't I? Wanted to see other people's pets. We posted, this is the Hobo Cat Chiba. Say hello to everyone. Wait, what was that? You think these people are what? Wait. You can't use that type of language here on YouTube. The middle claw. I can't give that middle claw. Oh, the double middle claw. Yes, so whoever was on the friend of verse, here's my pet. I know there was a picture of you with your. Here's. Man, I guess it's pet appreciation day at the friend of verse. So, you want to go back to your nap? Wait, what was that? You're going to put me to sleep? How are you going to do that? Oh. Oh. I could put someone to sleep. But hello, my name is Hobo Tom. And see here, let me. Oh, my God. I want to do that because, again, one friend over said so put your pits on. I shall put my pen on. I forget who said it though. The friend of verse is a closed group, and you kind of have to know people to get in now. I think I have my DIY shirt on, mainly because well, I like DIY, and the heel DIY is going to be awesome. So we'll see what they do with that. So it's a little bit late. I have an amazing dinner. If you have to go out to eat, and have like $55, go to Texas e. Brazil Steakhouse. 50 bucks for dinner. It's you so much steak. Delicious steak. Deliciously seasoned steak. And I had good company too. And I definitely recommend Texas D. E. Brazil Steakhouse. I just got, I just put on 20 pounds of steak. But I'm not here to talk about that. Well, I did. They earned that shout out. Again, Texas D. Brazil Steakhouse. Because SmackDown was not a Texas D. Brazil Steakhouse night. It was good. There were some parts that were really good. Some parts were, actually, wait a second. Cheeseburger, surf and surf. Cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. Oh, SmackDown was more like having a delicious cheeseburger from Five Guys. It's been a long time since I've been at Five Guys. They're pretty expensive. Man, for like 10 bucks. Actually, I think it's more than that now. The last time I ate it was like 15 bucks. You had like a bag full of fries. Two patties, cheese, bacon. I just say load it up. I'm going to get my freaking nine bucks worth for, for a cheeseburger, for a bacon cheeseburger. And a medium soda and of course they have free refills. Again, hobos have to know where there are free refills. And I think eventually I'm going to add a little bit more production value to this video. I have no idea how yet. But I shall. So let's talk about SmackDown. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. You can also email at, I'm going to keep my email, I guess, forever, my Gmail, hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. One of these days, I'm going to have time and figure stuff out. And I think between work, finding work, and fishing, and of course, watching wrestling, cooking, Playing with cat, doing dishes, laundry, hoboing, processing aluminum. Wow, I do a lot. For I do a lot for a guy whose name is Hobo Tom. Well, let's talk about some pro wrestling now. Well, there are no hobos there. 
So Charlotte Flair. Woo! Charlotte Flair. Are you single too? Hey, I'm single too. Woo! Because I'll tell you what. She's going all kinds of dolled up. And I think she's going a little overboard. The lipstick was okay. I can understand putting on the lipstick. It's that weird. And any woman watching this telling you what it is, it's like almost a black red lipstick. It really stands hands out. Especially if you have normally pale pink lips and blonde hair. So that black reddish lipstick really sticks out. And then she she had too much face makeup on. And it makes and it gives her that plastic face look. I don't like plastic face. I like my women all natural. The best. Can you wake up to that woman? I'm not gonna get into that. Enough about that nonsense. But Charlotte Flair, woo! Calls out Becky Lynch, says she's a coward. She just wanted to get injured so she didn't have to face Ronda Rousey. And she dare accuse Becky Lynch of Roman Reigns' entrance as she comes from the crowd. Woo! Becky, of course, gets in the ring with her. And that prompts Triple H to come out alone. Says, you, Charlotte, get back. Becky, you need to be medically cleared. And, of course, She's like, no, smacks Triple H. I'm out of here. Says Triple H. Until Becky Lynch asked if Stephanie was medically cleared. Oh! Triple H, thankfully he has that full beard, full mustache going. He was going to break out laughing. Because he really hold, had it hold back. And of course, after Becky Lynch smacked him, the whole crowd just had to chant, One more time. One more time. One more time. That was a pretty good crowd. And we'll hear more about that crowd a little bit later as well. Then our first match of the night is what was predicted last week, or or um, yeah, predicted. I guess this is the right word. The club versus Shinsuke Nakamura and Rusev. Gallows and Gallows. He comes out, starts off the match. Club clubs both Shinsuke and Rusev. And again with Gallows and uh, um, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. When they face Shinsuke, they seem to revert back to their New Japan ways, which I'm fine with. Rusev could actually do pretty well in the New Japan style, because, again, he fared pretty well in this match, too. Um, Anderson, again, takes kind of the brunt of it. He has a lot of different tights, because this time he wore, like, blue with either, was it white or silver trim? It looks good, though. They lost the, the Nerdometer stuff. Uh, Luke Gallows is, is still just a, a, a beastly man. Carl, Carl Anderson is still one of the greatest wrestlers ever. Um, I think a lot of people really have high respect for Anderson. I mean, he can do so much. Uh, Lana gets involved. She starts to, like, threaten to hit Shinsuke with a shoe on the outside. Like, get back in there. Do what you're supposed to do. That was good. Um... My only issue with this, Carl Anderson eats another pin. They have to let the club win at some point in time, or the club's going to go to all elite wrestling. I mean, they, they feature, granted, they do feature them a lot, and this was actually a really good match. I mean, it was a good quality cheeseburger match. So it's hard to complain about the quality 
I just want to see them. It was so neat to see them hold the belts, though. I'd honestly like to see them hold them again. I could be dreaming, though, which I probably am. Then you have a couple of promos. Mustafa Ali, some of the building. I'll tell you what, I don't know who recorded it, but that echo, that reverberation, made him sound awesome. I know some people say, oh, that's poor quality. I think that's amazing editing, and I thought that was amazing. It sounded really good. Then you have, have Paige doing another, another bump for her movie, Fighting with Her Family. The previews I've seen look good, but also all the good previews also features The Rock. The Rock can do no wrong. So we'll see how that goes. Then you have the Uso Penitentiary promo. And that was pretty fun. Um, oh, I have to give a shout out here to Cultaholic, Jack the Jobber, and Sam. There was a sign there just for you. One day in some crowd, there's going to be a Hobo Tom sign. He'll probably be me holding it too. So you never know. Say hey, Hobo Tom. Self promotion. Yes, that's what I need more of. So the next match was Randy Orton versus Mustafa Ali. This was a fun match. I was shocked. Ali, he's so quick. He got, he's not, the problem Ali has is that he's not as big as Orton. He's not as ring savvy as Orton. Um, they started, again, classic collar and elbow tie up. And Ali got pushed into the corner. Randy just said, you know how Randy does because he is Randy Orton. Oh, I should, I have to change that too. Oh, that's, an, that's a whole other side note. So Randy Orton, again, just kind of smile, let him go. Ali made the mistake, however, of pushing or slapping the chest of Randy Orton. Young boy, you never, ever lay your hands on one more experienced, one more senior than you. Eh -eh. Not going to happen. So, of course, with that shove or slap to the chest, Orton, can, Orton starts his onslaught on Ollie. At this point in the match, you realize... Ali cannot go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone in SmackDown. He could in 205 Live. Not on the main roster, though. Not big enough, not strong enough. Orton, again, he's much stronger. He's also a little too ring savvy. He knows where he is in the ring at all times. If he thinks he's in danger, he just rolls on out. Or he rolls on over somewhere else. Or as we'll see, he'll finish the match, too. Um, again, it was outside for a while. Again, there were some classic moves. Again, everything by Randy Orton. You've seen it. You've seen his whole moveset, but it looks original all the time, only because he does it things in a different sequence. So it's not like the five moves of Doom, where it's shoulder, shoulder tackle, shoulder tackle, backdrop, five knuckle shuffle, AA. That's just so predictable. Orton has the same moveset, but you don't know when he's going to do anything. So it makes it fresh. Ali can do that flippy stuff, and he has the mobility, though. He had an X Factor, which looked absolutely amazing onto Randy Orton. And I give Randy Orton all the credit in the world for selling the heck out of that move. Um, again, they got to the outside. Again, because of Ali's quickness, he was able to... He jumped over the table. Um, he threw Randy Orton over the table. Because the whole beginning, Randy Orton tried to backdrop him on the table. He flipped it, did a flippy thing, threw him over the table, and then did a, a diving splash over the table. Amazing. Um, again, on the outside, he's not going to win. So he got Randy Orton back. Randy Orton, smart though. He turned the 054 into an RKO, and he picked up the win. 
And then Samoa Joe shows up and puts Orton to sleep. So again, this was really a good surf and turf match. And Daniel Bryan and, and Rowan come out for a promo. Again, Daniel Bryan kind of talks to his crowd because I think they were in Washington. That's his home state. Samoa Joe's in the back. There's a promo. Samoa Joe. Best promo, man. Jeez, for a long time. No one's really delivered promos like that. I'll say, again, probably number one promo person's Randy Macho Man Randy Savage. Number two is Ric Flair. So Moe Joe has to, be, has to have the third best promos, though. Um, again, Daniel Bryan, the hometown, he gets the hometown. Bush Hippie Chair. Boy, Hippie's in Washington. Again, the Planet's Champion. And then there's the Elimination promo. Then the next match, I think it's like the loser doesn't get a spot. I guess. I have to take a look at things. But it was Carmella versus Naomi. Uh, Carmella and Naomi versus the Iconics versus Rose and Deville. And again, this was another fun match. Um, the whole storyline really being in this, Mandy Rose wants nothing to do with Naomi. Whenever Naomi got in the ring, she would, Mandy Rose would just tag someone. And it was weird because normally in this match, because the first team to get the pinfall wins, normally you never tag your opponents. But she just ran over, tagged Billy Kay. Billy Kay looked half surprised. She's like, whoa, I got tagged. It was fun. And they had their spots. Um, Car Carmella's improved so much, though. I never thought of her much as a wrestler when she was in NXT. But on SmackDown, she's. She has her own niche, and she's been allowed to develop as a wrestler, and it's really good. Again, DeVille, boo Sonya DeVille. Never get cheered by this guy. Not after, not after she beat my princess, Kimberly. But it was a fun match, though. Um, Mandy Rose hit that Tiger Bomb pedigree almost. Don't think they're going to allow her to do the Tiger Driver. But they do the Tiger Drive, the, the, the Tiger Gree? I, I have no idea what she calls it. But she puts her up for. Oh no, it's like a butterfly. It's a butterfly effect, I think. Because she picks her up, not like a Tiger Driver. Maybe, but it's like a butterfly suplex, and then she tr transitions it into a pedigree, which is pretty cool looking. Picks up the win as she did that to Carmella. So Carmella and Naomi, I guess, are not going to Elimination Chamber. I have to, I have to, I have to see, see that. Because, again, my prediction was that the WWE is going to have the revival of the Jumping Bomb Angels, except for this time it would be Kyrie Sane and Io Shirai. Which they should still do. Darn it. Again, just, just send me my money. No more copyright violations. And it was actually a really fun match. Again, this is a good quality cheeseburger match. And then the main event of the evening. Also, I just wanted to say that Carmel is back to her two-piece. That's all I'll say about that. And then we have Jeff Hardy versus Daniel Bryan. Again, I love the fact that they have two different styles. They have Daniel Bryan as a classic Matt, Matt wrestler. Uh, joint manipulation, really targeting the limbs. And, of course, Matt Hardy is the high-flying enigma like he always is. Uh, Rowan's on the outside. Um, he only got involved really twice. The first time it wasn't a DQ because Jeff Hardy sent Daniel Bryan to the outside. It looked like Jeff was going to go jumpy, flippy stuff. Rowan just stood right in front of him. 
said, uh-uh, not happening. So he backed off, and then Daniel Bryan sent him right over the steel steps. Um, there, Daniel Bryan again, using his te tentacle joint manipulation. I mean, he would put his arm up and stomp on the elbow. Uh, the bow and arrow. Again, the yes lock. Again, very technical wrestling. Um, Jeff Hardy, again, he does the Voltron kick, which looks good. Um, hit the twist of fate. He actually hit his finisher. He hit the Swanton Bomb onto Daniel Bryant. But then Rowan just pulled him off. And at that point, I'm like, why didn't I hear the ref call for the bell? And I don't think I... I might have missed it, but the ref didn't call for the bell because after Rowan pulled him out, I think Jeff Hardy hit him, got back in the ring. And then, of course, after that, all bets are off. So then... Samoa Joe shows up. Of course, because Samoa Joe showed up, Randy Orton showed up. And because Randy Orton showed up, Muhammad Ali showed up. Oh, no, Mustafa Ali. Call him Muhammad Ali. Ugh. Mustafa Ali showed up. And then, of course, AJ Styles shows up. And Daniel Bryan runs all the way away. Let's everyone brawl. Goes that gorilla position. <laughs> Yells at poor Charlie. What are you doing? Why did you ambush interview me? Don't you realize those men want to take my belt? And you're here interviewing me? Ah! So again, this was actually a really fun match. Ah. But because of the... You know what? I'm going to say, due to the whole schmoz and the whole Daniel O'Brien antics, this was a surf and turf match. And that was Raw in a nut. That was actually... It was again... I'm sorry, that wasn't raw. Wow, it must be late. Oh, wait, I have to go to work. Get ready in nine hours. That's not, that's no bueno. Again, that was a really fun, another good, fun show, SmackDown. I think that two hour time limit's really good. They got a lot of stuff in. We got a tag match, a woman's match. A singles match, singles match, and then promos. Works for me. So again, I would like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And if you've ever seen my shows, if you do leave a comment or subscribe, you get a little bonus video in your honor. So always do that. But again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. So everyone have a good night. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.